Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. So my name is Ramandeep Singh and today I'm going to teach uh, the basics of Indian financial system, the structure, what are the various parts. So let's start. So first of all, uh, what is a financial system? Financial system of any country consists of uh, financial markets, the first point, the financial intermediaries, and the third one the financial instruments the financial markets are forex markets money market capital market and inst uh, the intermediaries are brokers uh, stock brokers are there uh, stock exchanges are there lot of other middlemen investment bankers are there and financial instruments are like um, commercial papers cds are there uh, a lot of financial instruments are there even stocks and bonds a lot of st uh, I'm going to discuss all of them in the upcoming slides uh, first of all this one is really important uh, according to Robinson what is a financial system according to him uh, the financial system the primary function of a financial system is to provide a link between savings and investment for creation of wealth and to permit a portfolio adjustment in the composition of existing wealth see what does that financial system does whatever the money people makes right suppose uh, you are making 100 rupees a month and you are spending let's say 70 rupees 30 rupees is left uh, you save this money in a bank and back that money is mobilized and invested in the markets are you getting it when bank just give away that money as a credit to the industry so the financial system as it includes the financial market the financial intermediaries and the financial instruments right so there are finance there is financial market the financial market this is market financial market and this is intermediaries and these are financial instruments right are you getting it and these are financial in instruments so financial intermediaries it acts as a link between the savings and the investments for the wealth creation uh, so let's move forward. I'm going to provide the uh, this uh, this PPT uh, at the end of this lecture. So don't worry. So let's start. Uh, let's move forward. So basically, uh, the financial system helps the businesses and the industry to raise the funds from the financial market. So this is the basic uh, structure of financial system. There are financial instruments like money market instruments, capital market instruments, hybrid instruments. And then there is, there is, I mean, financial market is there only, sorry for that. And then there is financial market in which uh, the parts are forex market, money market, capital market and credit market. And then there are financial intermediaries. So these are the three parts, right? So first of all, we are going to discuss the financial market and then we are going to discuss the uh, the financial instruments and at the end we are going to discuss the financial intermediaries so financial market is not a physical market right so financial market can be defined as a market in which financial assets are created and transferred in which financial assets are created so what is a financial market in which financial assets or financial instruments are created so what are the further various types of financial market there are money markets there is capital market, there is forex market and there is credit market. As the name suggests, in the money market, it is a wholesale debt market in which low risk, highly liquid and short term instruments are, uh, you know, exchanged are provided. Uh, mostly it is known as call. I'm going to discuss the, the various financial instruments. I'm going to discuss the uh, call money, the notice money, right? So uh, there I'm going to discuss the various instruments in the money market. Uh, so it is a very low risk a market highly liquid for very short term from it ranges that the time period ranges from single day up to one year so it is dominated by government banks and the financial institutions normal individuals and companies they cannot take part in the money market operations right so this is money market then the capital market capital market is designed to finance the long term investments the equities the bonds they are part of capital market normally uh, the time period is more than a year and sometimes it can be like five six seven or ten years right 
so this is capital market money market is for uh, short term very short term needs of banks governments and financial institutions very low risk highly liquid and really short term loans are there uh, it ranges from one day to up to a year then forex markets forex market deals with the multi currency requirements right so which are met by the exchanges of currency so it deals with the multi currency requirements right and then the credit market credit market are for the general public like uh, you and me it's it for the companies right so it is a place uh, where banks financial institutions and nbfcs provide short medium and long term loans to the corporate and the individual you go to uh, the hdfc you go to like icic bank you ask for a loan and they provide they are providing the loans uh, the the business loan the you know personal loan they are their financial instruments and that is a credit market money market is for is for government is it is for banks it is for financial institutions and the credit market is for general public like you and me while the capital market it is for companies and governments as well uh, where the companies can issue shares the government can issue you know bonds the commercial papers can be there a lot of thing so what what are financial intermediaries uh see student uh there is a financial market right and the government is releasing the uh, bonds and there are companies who are issuing the shares and all this is financial markets right this is financial markets we call it fm okay then there are investors investors like you and me right uh, how to link these two i mean who who who's who's going to link the intermediaries and the investors it is the financial intermediaries I'm talking about who's going to link the financial markets and the investors. Financial markets, they are looking for funds and the investors, they are looking for investment opportunities, right? Uh, but it is really difficult to communicate, right? It is really difficult to process the payments and all. So uh, the financial intermediaries are there who are going to link both of them. So there are various uh, kind of financial intermediaries like investment bankers are there, underwriters are there, stock exchanges are there like NSC, BSC, registrars are there, depository, custodians, portfolio managers, mutual funds. Uh, I'm going to discuss the you know purpose of each of them in the next slides. Uh, so that's what the purpose of financial intermediaries. So the issuer should ensure these financial assets should reach the ultimate investors, the ultimate investor or to gather, uh, garner the requisite amount. How they can do it? With the help of financial intermediaries, right? Uh, so these are the various intermediaries. The stock exchanges are there. It deals with the capital market. Uh, so cap what is capital market? Uh, it, it is about stocks. It is about bonds, right? And it is a stock exchange where you can buy and sell your shares. So it acts as a secondary market. So what is the difference between secondary market and the primary market? Uh, see students when company issues share, <clears throat> a company issues the shares when a government they are issuing some bonds or zero coupon bonds, right? That is a primary market. Once uh, suppose I have like thousand shares of HDFC bank. Now I need money. I can go to the stock exchange and I can sell those stocks, right? I'm not going back to HDFC bank. Somebody else is buying my stocks, not the, the HDFC bank. So this is the secondary market. Okay, the so stock exchange acts as a secondary market, not a primary market. The investment bankers, right? Uh, investment bankers, they are kind of advisories. They are kind of brokers. Whenever there is a big transactions, for example, the transaction between Idea, Cellular and the Vodafone. I mean, whenever the small transactions are there, I mean, uh, the transaction is smaller volumes, you can directly go to stock exchanges. But whenever there are big ticket transactions, uh, there are investment bankers who are going to help you, right? So in case of huge loans, right, big loans, in case of, you know, mergers and acquisition, invest in, in, investment bankers comes into the pictures, right? Then underwriters. Uh, see, suppose there is a company who... Uh, who made an IPO initial public offering who you know who just released at shares of let's say thousand crore rupees I mean this company is not sure the ABC limited this company is not sure that uh, people are going to buy this much shares of this company so what they does is they go to the underwriters and they ask suppose if uh, people just buy the normal investor just buy uh, shares worth rupees 700 crores 
you are going to buy the rest of the shares so that's what the purpose of underwriters so there are underwriters in capital market as well as in the money market right so they are going to subscribe the unsubscribed portion of the securities then there are registrars uh, depositories and custodians uh, i'm going to do a proper session on mutual funds and going to discuss uh, how it works right so don't worry about that there are primary dealers and satellite dealers uh, that's in the money market so there will be a proper full fledged lectures in the future uh, again for the forex dealers i'm going to do the proper lectures and i'm going to discuss that in the future right as of now you can understand forex dealers they are related to forex market primary dealer and the satellite dealers they are related to the money market and registrar depositories and custodians they are related to the mutual fund industry and the capital market right so uh, what are the financial instruments there are various financial assets such as cash deposits checks uh we don't write it as checks checks loans account receivable letter of credit now it is letter of guarantee i mean after pnb letter of guarantees are really popular bank notes all other financial instru instruments that provide a claim against a, a person financial institution to pay a specific amount so basically uh, when you hold some uh, you know some instrument in which uh, an organization financial organization is obliged to pay you back Uh, either in terms of principal money either in terms of you know dividend or interest or whatever right so this is known as a financial asset or financial instrument so there are so right now we are going to discuss the money market instruments the most popular one the call and the notice money so this one is related to the financial institutions and banks there is call money or overnight money when the money is borrowed for one day excluding the hol holidays and the sundays so it is also known as the overnight money call money or overnight money for one day for one day it is call money up to 14 days when money is borrowed by banks uh, you know one bank borrows the money from another bank or uh, one if uh, bank borrows the money from another uh, financial institution uh, up to one day it is call money or overnight money up to 14 days it is notice money beyond 14 days it is known as the interbank term money right 14 days plus then it is known as interbank term money uh, then there are treasury bills so treasury bills are normally normal most of the times actually uh, in in case of india only union government of india is authorized to you know issue the treasury bills so they are uh, treasury bills are short term borrowing instrument of the union government so they are issued in terms of, uh, up to the the term of that uh, treasury bill is up to 1 year so normally they are there are 14 days uh, treasury bonds 91 day treasury bonds 182 day treasury bond and the 364 days days treasury bond right now 91 treasury uh, 91 days tre treasury bonds are really popular in india so these are the four kinds of you know uh, uh, treasury bill that the government of india can issue 14 days 91 days 182 days and 364 days Uh, so uh, it is an iou iou uh, in other words i uh, the of government of the government of india it promised uh, it is a promise by government to pay the stated sum after the expiry of the stated period and this is the safest uh, investment i mean um, this is the safest in investment because if the government go goes bankrupt everything else is going to be bankrupt as well so this is the safest investment if you ask me sir what is the safest investment this is even more uh, safer than that uh, fixed deposits right so this is the safest investment uh, they are issued at a discount the the government is not paying any sort of interest but these are issued at a discount right then one more thing uh, the zero coupon bonds are really popular the zero coupon bonds again zero coupon bonds these can be issued by companies uh, now uh, these have been you know paused previously it was issued by nabard nabard used to issue zero coupon bonds these were the deep discount bonds no interest was paid but it, these were paid on these were issued on a discount so the rate of treasury bills and the discount rate of credit treasury bills it can vary a lot right so it is determined at each auction there is a proper auction of treasury bills and the price is determined by the auction so which is further uh, you know um, uh, has impact of a lot of 
you know news or value of rupee and all so it depend upon a lots of factor then uh, the certificates of deposit another important instrument the certificate of deposit it is a negotiable instrument first of all negotiable market instrument and it is issued in dematerialized form you sense it is a promissory note and it is uh, issued in the dematerialized form for funds deposited at bank or uh, or other eligible financial inst institutions sorry for that for a specified period of time so first of all it is a negotiable instrument right uh, so it is governed by various directives uh, issued by the reserve bank of india this one is important first of all it is a negotiable instrument market instrument it is issued in a dematerialized form these two points are really important it is a negotiable instrument cd certificate of deposit is a negotiable instrument uh, issued in a dematerialized form and governed by the reserve bank of india these two points are really important and then cds are issued by the scheduled commercial banks excluding rrbs and local area banks are you getting it rrb and local area banks they cannot issue the cds the certificate of deposit uh, it can be released by the scheduled commercial banks and select all india financial institutions that have been permitted by rbi to raise short term resources within the umbrella of fixed limit by rbi so scheduled commercial banks can release it and all india financial institutions they can release it but rrb and local area banks they cannot release it uh, so banks have the freedom to issue the cds depending upon their requirements right so the only the banks can release it rrb cannot release the certificate of deposit while there are commercial papers again these are really important commercial paper is an unsecured money market instrument issued in a form of promissory note so it is also a promissory note the previous one was also a promissory note uh, but it is an unsecured promissory note the original tenure of cp should be between seven days to one year cp is freely negotiable by endorsement and the delivery so this one is important cp is freely negotiable by the endorsement and the delivery then the eligible issuer who are the eligible issuer of as per the latest guidelines by rbi the latest i have just seen the latest guidelines of rbi i mean 2018 guidelines i have seen only companies uh, who who's eligible to issue the commercial papers companies including the nbfcs and all india financial institutions are eligible to issue the cps subject to one condition if you have taken any loan any credit from any financial institutions that should be classified as standard asset by all financial banks institutions at the time of issue so if uh, any of you are uh, you know uh, if you have taken any loan if a company has taken any loan if you have any loan or any advance and that is not a standard asset other and it is a doubtful asset if it is an npa then you are not eligible to issue the commercial papers so other entities like cooperative society union government uh cooperative society union sorry it is not union government government entities trust limited liability partnership and other body corporates who whoever have a presence in, in india and with a net worth of 100 crore or higher subject to conditions above i mean they are uh, uh if they have taken any loan from any financial institution that should be a standard asset and if you are a co cooperative society and if you are any government entity or trust or limited liability partnership or any other corporate body uh you should have a presence in india and your net worth should be 100 crore plus and any of your loan should not be an npa and it should be a standard asset and you need to tell the end use that is an important point you need to explain wh what you are going to do with that money in your papers right so any other entity specified permitted by the rbi they are also eligible so that one is really important who is eligible to issue a commercial paper so the capital market instruments the equity shares the preference shares the convertible preference shares all these are you know capital market instruments so normally they are issued for a long period of time so student ask there your doubts in the discussion forum i hope you like this lecture so in the case there is any doubt you can ask us in the discussion forum so that's all for today students thank you have a very nice day